James. I'm an armchair warlord. This is segment three of our discussion of the role-playing game Pathfinder and how to get into that game. Uh, we're going to discuss in this uh, video races and how to select a race for creating a character. So the basic Pathfinder game offers a good selection of starting races. These are your basic uh, medieval game core races that you're, you're going to see across a wide variety of games. Um, the dwarf, the halfling, the elf, the human, the gnome, the half orc, and the half elf. These are pretty standard setup. Now, Pathfinder's made some cool additions and tweaks to the to the races and the racial traits. Um, some of them you may like, some of them you may not. Um, most of them at least make sense. And we'll go over what each race has and its strengths and weaknesses and why you should or should not pick that, that race based on what type of character you're going to want to play in your game. Uh, now this picture here on page 20 of the book will just give you a good understanding of uh, the size, the physical size differences between each of the races. Um, as you can see there's a pretty big difference between like a halfling and a half orc. Um, it's not really going to make a huge difference in terms of social interactions because most of the environments in Pathfinder are built around uh, being extremely multiracial, um, it's only going to make a difference in terms of combat mechanics and usually only for the two smaller ones, the halfling and the gnome. So the first one we'll discuss is dwarves. Dwarves are your short, stout, very hardy, uh, underground dwelling race of miners and forge smiths. I mean, you're very archetypal dwarf. Uh, who lives in a mountain and makes things out of metal all day long or spends his day mining. That's, that's the type of dwarf they try to create in this game. And if you want to choose a dwarf, you're going to get most of that uh, feel while you're going through and adding these racial traits to your character sheet. Um, the first thing to note is the ability score bonuses and penalties that dwarves get. They get a plus two to constitution, a plus two to wisdom, and a minus two to charisma. This means they're going to get more hit points than the standard character. They're going to be a little more perceptive and aware of their surroundings, but they're not going to be able to uh, engage in social interaction quite as well. Now, dwarves are uh, medium-sized. Even though they're shorter than humans, they're not quite short enough to be considered small, so they don't get any of the bonuses or penalties for being small. They're still medium-sized creatures. They do, however, uh, get the slow and steady trait, which means that their base speed is 20 feet. Um, no matter what, even if they're wearing really heavy armor like full plate, they're still moving 20 feet per round unless some other extraneous factor is reducing their speed. Dwarves also get an extremely useful trait called dark vision, which means that they can see uh, even in total darkness. Now, this isn't uh, like they can see just like a normal person in darkness. It's uh, supposed to be a thermal black and white thing, but it's still extremely useful. It means they don't have to walk around with a torch or any kind of lantern or anything like that. They can still see what's going on around them. Um, dwarves also get uh, defensive training, which gives them uh, a plus four bonus to their armor class when they're engaged in monsters of the giant subtype. Dwarves and giants have this uh, racial hatred that's gone back many centuries, and so they built that into the racial traits section by allowing dwarven characters to be able to dodge blows from giants based on the idea that they know how to fight giants very well. Um, they all, the next thing they get is a greed. A trait which gives them a bonus to their appraise skills whenever they're um, trying to appraise the value of non-magical goods, uh, particularly ones that contain uh, precious metal or gemstones. The idea being that dwarves spend most of their lives mining and working with metal and gems and so they know a lot about their value. The next thing they get is hatred, uh, which gives them a plus one attack uh, whenever they're, or plus one to their attack rolls whenever they're fighting uh, creatures of the orc and goblin subtype. This is again due to an archetypal theory that uh, dwarves have a long history of engaging in battle with uh, orcs and goblins and that comes from living in mountains and caves, uh, areas that are contested by orcs and goblins who also like to live in dark damp places. The next thing they get is hardy which gives them a plus two whenever they're trying to resist poison spells and spell like abilities. This goes into more of their, their really stout nature where they're very physically uh, durable and they can resist a lot of injury. And the next thing they get is stability, which gives them a plus four bonus to their combat maneuver defense when uh, resisting a bull rush or uh, an attempt to trip them. And this comes from the idea that they're short and stout and so it's harder to push them over or to make them fall down by kicking at their legs. 
Uh, the next thing they get is stone cunning. Stone cunning is a very generalized trait that gives them plus two perception bonus whenever they're trying to notice unusual stonework in a dungeon or under uh, underground or whenever they're trying to spot traps or hidden doors or anything that might be made out of stone. The idea being that they know a lot about uh, stone and carving it out of mountainsides and making caves and underground dwellings. Now dwarves are uh, extremely useful if you're if the class that you pick based on our previous segment uh, was fighter or barbarian they get lots of combat bonuses and their bonus to constitution gives them a lot more uh, staying power in a fight uh, they can also make good clerics if you're going to uh, rely more on their combat ability make them a more combat oriented cleric than say a heal bot um, they're going to want to focus on melee combat and uh, typically combat in close quarters such as in tunnels or any other type of cramped space. That's where they're going to excel. The next racial choice is elves. Again, they've gone very archetypal with the elves. Um, it's your very traditional standardized elf. Uh, the first thing they get with their attributes is a plus two to dexterity and a plus two to intelligence but a minus two to constitution. Elves are uh, theoretically more agile, they can dodge hits better, they can respond to sudden events and they have better uh, reflexes and initiative. They're also slightly more intelligent than your standard human, um, just a little bit more raw mental ability and this plays more into their understanding of magic and magical systems than it does with just uh, any type of education or that matter. Also. Uh, it stems from the fact that they're very long-lived. Your standard elf uh, can reach a lifespan of about 1,200 years uh, in game terms, which is, you know, gives them an, a, a long time to learn new things and to get smarter. Now, the minus two to constitution comes from the fact that even though he's very long-lived, his body's very frail. They're really thin and, and tall. Their their limbs break easily, and uh, they don't uh, stand up to punishment as well as say a dwarf or a human. Um, they're medium size, so you get all the standard uh, size bonuses or modifiers, which is typically none. Um, their normal speed, they move at the speed of a human. Uh, the first uh, really good ability they have is low light vision. This means that even in shadowy darkness, like uh, just torch light or lantern light or something coming from a campfire, they can still see in that level of light just as good as they could in broad daylight. Um, the next ability they get is elven immunities. All elves are immune to uh, magic sleep effects and they get plus two bonuses against enchantments and uh, enchantment spells and enchantment effects. Their minds are, are stronger, they're more uh, resistant to things that, uh, external things that try to take control of their thoughts. And also there's the idea uh, that elves don't sleep and so naturally they're immune to magical sleep effects. Um, it doesn't really go into it in the game, uh, in the Pathfinder game anyway, whether or not elves do actually sleep. It doesn't really matter. Most DMs aren't going to force you to go through role playing uh, whether or not your character sleeps anyway. Um, most elves, uh, because the general idea is that they don't sleep, they usually make good guards at night. The next thing they have is elven magic. Um, elves and Pathfinder are uh, very rooted in magic. They have a magic history. They've, they've got an affinity with it. They've worked with it for a long time. And because they're so long lived, they have the ability to master magical abilities much better than humans or any of the other shorter lived races. So with Elven Magic, they get a plus two whenever they're making a caster level check to overcome spell resistance. This means they can punch through spell defenses much better than a normal person. Um, they also receive plus two bonuses on spellcraft checks. Uh, made to identify um, the properties of magic items. So because they're so long-lived and have such a, a broad array, array of experience, um, they have a bigger knowledge and a bigger pool of experience to be able to identify an item just by looking at it. The next mechanical thing they have is keen senses. They get a plus two bonus to their perception checks. The pointed ears and their larger eyes give them better hearing and better sight so they can uh, see and, and hear things at greater distances. So they have a slight bonus to that. Um, elves are going to be most useful as wizards because of their intelligence bonus. Um, they're also going to be useful as uh, rogues and rangers and, and even as druids. They don't get the bonus to wisdom that you might want, but uh, the other bonuses that they get make them uh, very fit out to be a decent druid. So the next race we're going to is gnomes. 
Uh, gnomes are um, not a very common race for players to, to get into. Um, some players love them, some players swear by them, but a lot of players don't uh, ever get into gnomes because gnomes have a, a wide array of racial traits. And on top of that, um, they're small. So there's a lot of bonuses and penalties that get applied to the character sheet writing, character creation that uh, can be hectic to deal with if you're a newcomer to the game. So the first thing though is their ability score modifiers. They get a plus two to constitution, a plus two to charisma, and a minus two to strength. Uh, so they're, they're hardier, they can take more damage, they're more uh, resistant to disease and poison. Um, also, uh, they're, they're more charismatic, they're able to carry on conversations better, they're more jovial and enjoyable uh, in a conversation. Uh, your minus two to strength comes from the fact that they're small, they can't, uh, they can't hit as hard because they just don't have the, the muscular size or ability to inflict as much damage. Now because they're small, they get slow speed penalties, so their base speed is 20 feet as opposed to the 30 feet that your regular size races get. The next thing is low light vision, and it's, it's exactly the same as the elven low light vision. They can see in poor lighting just as well as they can in, in good lighting. The next thing they get is defensive training, and this gives them a plus four bonus to uh, dodging bonuses against giants. Um, this is the exact same as the Dwarven ability and it also stems from the same uh, archetypal idea that gnomes have a long history of fighting with giants so they know how to dodge blows from them better. Uh, gnome magic uh, is another ability. It, it adds uh, bonuses to the difficulty class um, of any illusion spells that they cast. So when they're casting things like enchantments or um, uh, excuse me, illusions where they're creating false environments or they're creating things like mirror images of themselves. They're much better at this based on the idea that elves have a long history of using magic as a form of trickery to deceive and to hide and to evade enemies. Um, the next thing they have is hatred and again this is exactly like the dwarven hatred ability. It gives them a plus one to attack rolls whenever they're fighting uh, reptilian and goblinoid creatures and again stemming from the historical idea that goblins fight reptilian and goblinoid creatures all the time. Um, just like they get bonuses to illu casting illusion magic, they get resistances to illusion as well. They get a plus two to any uh, uh, illusion spells or effects used against them, so it's harder to fool them with illusions because they're so familiar with their, their use. They also get keen senses, and this is exactly like the keen senses of elves. They get a plus two bonus to their perception checks, again, because they're larger eyes and pointed ears. They can see and hear a lot better. Um, another trait they get is obsessive. They get a plus two racial bonus on craft or profession skills of their choice. Uh, gnomes have a, a reputation for being skilled craftsmen or skilled laborers. They can build things and make things much better than normal people. Now because of their attributes and their uh, array of abilities, uh, your gnomes are typically going to be good sorcerers and good bar bards. These are people who um, want to cast a lot of spells and avoid being hit in combat and also uh, have a decent array of, of skills to use uh, in any situation. Next is your half-elves. Half-elves are blended elves and humans. Uh, because of that, they're Ability score bonus is that they get the same one as a human does. They get to add plus two to any ability score of their choice. This is extremely useful if you are if you want to play a half-elf because it basically means that whatever class you're playing, you can add a plus two to the key ability for that class. Um, they're medium-sized, just like a human, so they get all the same uh, mechanical attributes that a human does in that regard. They have normal speed. You know, they have the elven low-light vision uh, that works just like elves and gnomes. They can see in poor lighting as well as they can in, in regular lighting. They have the human adaptability, which means that uh, at first level and every level thereafter, they get to add a bonus skill point. So they've got their raw skill points for their class, their bonus skill points for their intelligence, and then they get a plus one on top of all that. So it'll allow them to pick a broader range of skills. Um, they have elf blood, so they're, they're considered to count as both elves and humans for the purposes of any effect that's related to race. So a spell that only affects humans will affect a half-elf, whereas a spell that only affects elves will still affect a half-elf. Um, they also have inherited the elven immunities. They're immune to magic sleep effects and they get the plus two bonus to uh, saves against enchantment spells and effects. 
and they've also inherited the elven keen senses from their point of ears and larger eyes. They can see and hear better. They get the same plus two to perception. Um, they're also considered multi-talented. So if you're playing a game where the DM is enforcing the rules for multi-classing, uh, multi-talented elves will get a bonus there because uh, they can pick um, or they can get a plus one hit point and plus one skill point uh, every time they take their uh, favorite class and their favorite class is something they can choose just like their ability score bonus. Uh, because of their ability to move their ability score bonus around and their ability to move their favorite class around as well as the other things that they have, especially the adaptability, half elves are really good for playing any class. Um, there's no one class that they excel at better than another and there's no one that they suck at more than another. So if, you're, if you've picked a class that uh, you can't really figure out which race is best and you want to go generic, half-elves are um, a good step between humans, which are completely generic, and one of your other more specialized classes like elves, because they'll give you that, uh, that all-around feel of having uh, you know, a good character who's good at everything. Next is the half-orc. Now, just like the half-elf, the half-blood orc um, is a mix between a human and an orc. He gets to add his plus two ability score bonus to any ability score. Uh, this differed from traditional D20 games, where half-orcs usually receive bonuses to strength and constitution. Um, uh, Pathfinder decided to simplify that with the, the half-elf, or the half-blooded uh, idea that all half-bloods can uh, add their ability score bonus to any score that they choose. Um, half orcs get uh, dark vision, which is just like the dwarven dark vision. They see thermally in, in complete darkness. Um, also, they're intimidating because of their large size, their green skin, and their fearsome looking facial appearance. Uh, they get a plus two bonus to intimidate checks. Um, just like the half elf, half orcs are considered orc blooded, so they count as humans whenever they're under an effect uh, that affects humans particularly, and they count as orcs in the same instance if a, if a spell or an effect is targeting orcs in particular. And their last useful ability is uh, orc ferocity. Um, so once per day, an orc can go into this furious state that's kind of like a weakened, uh, watered down version of a barbarian's rage. It's not anywhere nearly as good. All it does is allow him to continue standing and fighting for one more round after he's hit the point where he should be dropping unconscious. Um, now, because of uh, their ability to move their ability score bonus around and uh, their other combat-related uh, traits, half-orcs make good barbarians, they make good fighters, but uh, because of the way Pathfinder more uh, generalized the half-blood traits, Orcs also can be useful in pretty much any role. They can play any class uh, quite well. Next is halflings. Halflings, are, like gnomes, are another small race. Uh, these are your short characters who traditionally dwell underground or in hobbit holes. Um, as far as their uh, ability scores are concerned, they get a plus two to dexterity, a plus two to charisma, and a minus two to strength. Uh, because they're smaller, they're very agile and adept at uh, uh, dodging and using their reflexes to their advantage. They're also quite good at carrying on conversations and, and being uh, good at social interaction, which is where the charisma bonus comes from, and they take the penalty to strength for being small. Um, so because their size is small, they get all the uh, requisite bonuses to armor class and attack and penalties to um, uh, certain skills and attack roles that come from being a small character and also their speed is reduced to 20 feet as well. Now despite being small, halflings are considered fearless. They get a plus two racial bonus to any saving throws against fear. Um, just keep in mind that that bonus is not meant to stack with, or that bonus is meant to stack with their halfling luck bonus uh, which is their second ability or their next uh, trait which gives them a plus one bonus to all their saving throws. So all three, fortitude, reflex, and will, they get to add a plus one on top of everything else. They have keen senses that work exactly like the elven and half elven keen senses. They get a plus two to perception. Um, one uh, very useful half one trait is that they're sure-footed, so they get a plus two bonus on acrobatics and climb checks. They're very good at uh, maintaining a good grip on things and not uh, losing their balance or falling over. So because they're small and because they um, are very agile and they have uh, traits that modify their agility and their grace, they make excellent rogues. 
Um, they're also good at being bards, and because of their charisma and dexterity bonuses, they can make good sorcerers as well. Lastly, we have humans. Humans are your uh, generic race. This is the race you pick if you can't really decide on any other race to pick. Um, or if you're playing a class that doesn't really uh, have key ability scores that are benefited by the ability score bonuses from another race. Um, humans uh, get their plus two ability score to any score they choose. Um, they are of course medium size and of normal speed. Now the thing that's most useful for humans when they're starting out is their bonus feet. So every character gets a feat at first level, but humans get two feats at first level. Um, that can make a huge difference when you're first starting out because feats are usually very powerful game mechanics, and so being able to pick two of them can give a human a distinct advantage early on in the game. Um, and also, their next ability is skilled. Um, they get to add uh, a bonus skill uh, whenever they're selecting their skills and, and uh, uh, figuring out their total pool of skill ranks to divide out. And this applies to every time they level up, so they get that plus one skill point all the time. Um, humans, because of their, their very generalized abilities and their ability to move their uh, ability score bonus around, they are good for any class. They don't excel at any class, they don't suck at any class, they're good for pretty much anything. So if you want to play a very all-around generic character, then humans are a good choice.